If you look at some of the bewildering statistics from Southern Stilan, you could feel a bit like the boy in Robert Louis Stevenson's book who says the world is so big and I'm so small, I do not like it at all at all. You could feel utterly bewildered. This is such a critical time for Sudan. Uh, Sudan has suffered civil war for most of the years since independence. There's now a peace agreement, fragile. There's an opportunity for the South to decide its own future. So it's a very important time to discuss key issues. Clearly there's going to be a crucial moment next year when the comprehensive peace agreement will be tested to its very limits uh, to see whether Khartoum, for instance, is prepared to accept the result of the referendum. Sudan can either uh, move forward in a peaceful and prosperous way and then on to the national referendum next year, or it can regress. But let's assume for a moment that the referendum comes, goes out in favour of independence. Then there will be as many issues that that presents in terms of how you create a new nation, what its relations will be with its neighbours, and how you provide security both in the north and the south. That's a very big issue, how you divide the oil dividends, uh, how you involve the international community. The international community has supported Sudan robustly you know, through providing significant amounts of aid and being engaged in the political process all along. However, there have been important shortcomings, both in terms of the um, offering protection to civilians through the peacekeeping mission that has not been particularly effective in this respect, and also in the modalities of assistance, which has not focused on the most immediate priorities um, and focused so too much on the centre and on building the capacity of the government while leaving some of the most pressing needs for the more isolated communities unattended. I'm very worried about the marginalised areas, and particularly Southern Kurdistan. Just been there. Um, the Nuba Mountains, they're traditionally called, and people like it called Nuba Mountains. They are deeply worried because they and the other so called marginalised areas of Blue Nile and Abyei don't really know their own future. They're worried about the loss of their African identity and culture through processes of Arabization, and they're also concerned about forced. Islamization, and the Muslims are as worried about that as the Christians, and when the North tried to impose Sharia in Kadugli, that was robustly resisted by all the peoples of Southern Kurdistan. It's important that uh, the international community re-engages politically very robustly in Sudan ahead of uh, the referendum, but it is important that this re-engagement happens in a very coordinated and uh, as harmonized as possible fashion. We should also have been doing more about the two million southerners who live in the north of the country, mainly in refugee camps and in shanty towns around Khartoum, who will not be able to register to vote in the elections this year or the referendum next year. And I think it's disgraceful that they risk being wholly alienated about the future of their country because of the registration processes. So the international community could have been doing much more about that. It could be doing much more to stop the flow of arms into Sudan. The CPA was possible mainly thanks to the very engaged um, role that some of the observer countries played, particularly the UK, the US, Norway and Italy. It's that level of engagement that we need today. It's very urgent given the important appointments that Sudan is meeting this year. The country has opportunities, of course it's got oil, which I know is sometimes a, uh, not a blessing, but it has oil, it obviously has the potential for two major capitals within Africa, Khartoum and Juba. It is at time difficult to be positive about the future of Sudan. However, I am encouraged by the resilience of the Sudanese and I am sure that they will provide um, what is needed to take the country forward in the years to come. I hope that Sudan will look forward to a new decade of peace, prosperity and a country that can really live up to its potential. It is a beautiful country uh, and I think it can be the jewel in the crown of that part of Africa if there is a will to do it. And I think this is the time to do it.